and unless otherwise indicated, you're pretty safe choosing a sequence as the way to relate your parents and children. However, let's now talk about the other major kind of, of, of ordering of children. There's a couple that we won't talk about. These are the, the two that we'll cover, the main ones. Um, and that's the idea of a choice. So to do that, I'm going to, I created a special schema just for, um, just for showing you in simple terms how these choices work. So here we have another schema. It's an addresses schema. It's all about addresses. And an address can be specified as a simple address or as a complicated address. In other words, I can choose a very simple, address, a very simple approach to entering these addresses, or I can choose a very complicated approach. You agree that that's more complicated than this one. That's just a one-liner. In this case, we just type the whole address into one element and maybe use commas or something, whatever, to separate the different parts of it. And in this one, we work out all of the different little nuances of the, of the address. How is it that we're allowed to have either a simple address or a complex address. We don't want to have a sequence here, right? We don't want to have a simple address followed by a complex address. We want to be able to either have a simple address or a complex address. Notice this little icon here and notice that it's different than the sequence icon. This is the choice icon. And in this case, it says the address parent has a choice of either a simple address child or a complex, complex address um, child. Not both, either or. Right? So I get, to, I get to have either the simple address or the complex address, which is a good thing because I don't want to have both of them. I want you to be able to choose. So either having a simple address child or having a complex address child under the address parent will be, will be sufficient. Okay, so now let's look at the complex address. Let me um, close some of these down a little bit. And we can combine, uh, again, we have here this idea of a complex address is a sequence. What's it a sequence of? It's a sequence of street one, an optional street two, a city, then two of these things, which I'll come to in a moment, then a country, then notes. So the first guiding icon here is a sequence icon. So a complex address has this sequence of things. However, notice that smack dab in the middle of the sequence, I have a choice. And the first choice is this one. I can choose to be part of a state, a province, or a region. Not all three, only one of those. So a complex address following the city child has one of these three choices. So now I've combined the idea of a sequence with the idea of a choice. And one of my places, one of my placeholders in the sequence is actually a choice. And you can see for an address that that makes kind of sense. Depending on where the address is, you may need to specify a state or a province or a region. Similarly, I may have a zip code or a postcode. And notice in this case, the choice is optional. Maybe there's neither a zip code nor a postcode. So now I have all of these things working together, and I'm hoping you can begin to see that you can create very sophisticated, very complex models out of these fairly simple concepts. We really only have three concepts working here. Well, actually four. The first and the major concept is the idea of hierarchy, that there are parents and children. The second concept is the idea of optionality. Either something is optional or it's not optional. The third concept is the concept of a sequence, that our children can come in some sort of order. And the fourth concept is the concept of a choice, that in a particular slot of the parentage or the tag hierarchy, I can allow choices as to which element goes in there. So the one other thing that we'll, that we'll add later on in the course that really, really adds even more sophistication to this is not just using optionality, um, uh, excuse me, not just using optional or mandatory cardinality, but actually allowing unbounded choices of elements. And we'll see that that gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility in the kinds of tags that will satisfy the, um, that will satisfy the, uh, the schema. Okay, so let's review here. I went over the concepts of a sequence, which means the children have to come in some sort of order. I went over the concept of a choice, which means you have the choice between element A or element B, and in this case there's an A, B, and C, and there can be as many as you want. And then I started to complicate things by combining the different rules. That's the way that, that schemas work. They're really a small set of simple rules, and it's in their combination that things get sophisticated, and in their combination that you're able to model just about anything that you want. Okay, well, I have to talk about one other thing, and that's the idea of mixing. Mixing as children, as child elements, text nodes, as well as um, as well as child nodes. So here we have the notes down here under the complex address, and if I open that up, 
it says it's a sequence of zero or more bolds. Now, what does that really mean? Uh, without, without some extra information, the only thing you can probably interpret that is, is that a note has anything between zero and any number of bold, 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 bold. That's a weird kind of note, don't you think? Bold is really the something that you put over a word or a, you know, a certain set of characters inside the note. It's not a child itself. What we really intend for a note is that the note be text, right? Word, 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 and some of those words inside the text be allowed to be bold. That's meaning that makes sense under notes. The notes is just a sentence, and then some of the words in that sentence can be bold. How do we indicate that they're bold? By using this bold element here. So now we have the concept of what we want to accomplish. We want to accomplish having a sentence that has interspersed within it some tags. And of course, I could choose to have other tags besides just bold, but in this case, I've only chosen to have bold. So how do I make that happen? Stretch back your, your, your imagination back to when we talked about text nodes. And we said that you can have text nodes interspersed with elements, right? And we went through a lot of exercises about how you can count up the text nodes and how the text node is interspersed with bolds and italics and that sort of thing. The name for that in schema land is mixed. And here's how you specify it. You click, on the, uh, you click on the element that you want to be mixed, that is, have a combination of text nodes and child elements. Go up to the Attributes tag here, and under the attribute that says Mixed, say True. If I say Mixed equals False here, that's going to indicate that I can have no text nodes. I can only have child bold nodes, which is not what I want to have happen. Okay, so this, con this concept of Mixed is a fairly complicated one, sometimes takes a little while to sink in, but if you keep in mind what you're trying to accomplish, and in this case we're trying to accomplish sentences where certain words are allowed to be bold, then start to look for the mechanism by which you can do that in, in, um, in Oxygen. You'll be on the right track, not only for understanding mix, but for understanding all the things that you want to accomplish. Begin from what it is you want to do, from what it is you want to have happen, and then work back and try to find a way to make that happen. And so far to date, I've never found anything that I could imagine wanting to happen that I couldn't make somehow happen by um, messing around long enough with the schema to allow the to allow it to do what I want it to do.